we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Chair Lawson isn't here to call the meeting to order. We actually um, do have a quorum, though. So if one of the board members would like to call the meeting to order. Jason. I can do that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there is no action items, even though we have a quorum um, for today's meeting. First up on the agenda is a legislative update from Jacob. And so I'll turn that over to you. Um, it's been a busy week and a busy start to session, and there was a lot of stuff happening yesterday. So I'll let uh, Jacob uh, bring you up to speed on everything. There we go. Uh, for the record, Jacob White, staff to the board. Um, just uh, first, just wanted to go over the board endorsed bills and where they're at. Um, just as a reminder, I think everyone gets them, but I do send out the weekly updates uh, during legislative session. And then uh, this year, we're also posting those on the website. So uh, anyone else uh, listening in who would like to see those, um, those are available to, to the public as well. Um, so uh, yesterday, ways in, at ways, Senate Ways and Means, uh, there was a hearing on uh, both of the board endorsed bills. So I'll go ahead and update you on those. Um, but first, I uh, want to talk about um, what we're calling the uh, left to omnibus bill. Uh, there was a decision made um, uh, by the chair and uh, the board's legislative members uh, that given that it's a short session, uh, the number of bills that have been endorsed um, by the left to board um, and uh, that it made sense to combine those bills, at least well, four of those bills into one larger bill. And so uh, the bill number on that is uh, House Bill 2338, Senate Bill 6197. And the four policy topics that that board included were the special death benefit, the definition of firefighter, uh, changing the overpayment responsibility from the member to the employer, and uh, the uh, duty disability pension benefits related to PTSD. Um, and then uh, the board salary setting authority was kept as its own uh, separate bill. Uh, on the uh, omnibus bill, um, so that had a hearing yesterday. It also had a fiscal note, so I wanted to update uh, the board on the fiscal note. The actuaries had told us when the bill, uh, when the board was first endorsed in the different topics, that there was no uh, fiscal impact, no impact rate impact uh, from those proposals. But by combining those bills, it did just tip it over into having a rate impact. Um, so there was a one basis point impact to the member and the employer rates and no impact to, to the state rate. And there was no impact to the state rate, at least my understanding of it is, because of the overpayment responsibility uh, bill, that that puts that uh, impact on the employer and not the state. So it didn't quite, uh, these uh, issues combined did not quite uh, result in an um, impact to. Uh, 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 to the state. So, uh, that bill had a hearing yesterday. Uh, there were no questions from any of the Ways and Means uh, members. And then also, uh, well, I guess first, if there's any questions on that as I go, feel free to, to jump in and ask any questions. Um, and then well, I guess one other update on that I wanted to provide is we did get some, so we'd been working with DRS and LNI and L and I did have some concern, um, not on the special death benefit that we'd been working on them with, but on the amendment to the definition of firefighter, and it was just a technical amendment. So you may see an amendment if this uh, bill continues to move forward. And um, just want the board members to be aware that we are aware of that technical amendment and are working with the sponsor and uh, staff, uh, le legislative staff um, on that amendment. Um, and then, uh, okay, so then on to uh, the salary setting authority of the board. Uh, that is House Bill 2337 or Senate Bill 6198. Um, as I said, that also had a hearing yesterday in Ways and Means. There were uh, no questions from uh, committee members. Uh, and then also did just want to 
let the board know that there may it, it, there's likely going to be an amendment um, to that bill, and that is an amendment that was suggested by OFM. It's okay. um, and uh, it makes no substantive change uh, to the board's proposal. It uh, simply just moves the language, the amendment out of the personnel statutes and puts them solely into the left two statute. Um, and then uh, the last bill to update the board on is the month of death benefits. That is House Bill uh, 2013. It is scheduled for, it had a hearing, I think, a I think it was last week session. <laughs> These weeks can feel long and short, um, but I think it was last week and it's been scheduled for exec on the 25th. Um, there was, uh, so there was a fiscal note done for that. Uh, there was a four basis point impact to uh, members in left two. So that was all the update on the board endorsed bills. And I guess the month of death, once again, was not an endorsed bill, but it was a, uh, a board supported bill. So we did sign up, uh, board staff signed up in support of that bill instead of testifying. And then also just wanted to let you know some other bills of interest that you may have heard about that we are tracking. And we have a longer list of bills that we track, but we try to just uh, put these ones on our website and in our updates to you that um, have a, a clear impact to uh, the left two statute or left two plan. Um, so the first one is House Bill 2024. Uh, and actually this has a companion bill that's not listed here, Senate Bill 5424. And it's uh, a bill concerning flexible work policies for law enforcement officers. And this was a bill from last session that is carried over. And it's actually the Senate version of the bill uh, that has uh, uh, continued to move this session. So it, earlier uh, this session, it passed out of the Senate floor and has been uh, referred to the House. However, it's not been scheduled uh, for a hearing yet in House, and it's actually in uh, House Community and Safety is the uh, committee it was referred to. Uh, so we're continuing to keep an eye on that. And that was the bill that would allow for uh, part-time law enforcement officers to be eligible for left two. And then uh, there's another bill, uh, Senate Bill 6000, which expanded interruptive military service credit. Um, this one received a hearing in Ways and Means, and there was questions from Ways and Means members asking, didn't we just do a bill on this and take care of this? Um, which it kind of feels like every year there is a bill on interruptive military service credit, uh, and this one would continue to expand it. So currently, um, the campaign medals and badges, and, and then um, a couple years ago, expeditionary medals were added um, to qualifying for that no-cost interruptive military service credit this bill would expand that down to another level of metal, uh, service metals. And so the actuaries did do a fiscal note on this. Um, they had some concerns about finding reliable data, as the board may remember from when we've studied this in the past, it's been uh, difficult to find um, good data on how many uh, members may qualify for this. Um, but they uh, put uh, that it would be a four basis point increase uh, to the plan. Um, and so far, uh, the bill has not been scheduled for exec in Ways and Means. And then lastly, there was uh, there's a bill, Senate Bill 6022, that establishes law enforcement officer retirement medical trust plans. And so this was an interesting bill. I should start off by just saying that it hasn't been scheduled for a hearing um, yet. And it would require cities and counties to establish retirement medical trust uh, retirement medical trust plan for post-employment medical expenses for law enforcement, um, nothing for firefighters. Um, and then it would be, uh, it would take, uh, distribute 50 million from the general fund to the left two board to uh, be in charge of distributing to cities and counties for this fund. And then further it would have the left two board uh, responsible for developing criteria for the distribution of that money that would take into account um, improving recruitment and retention of law enforcement officers. So that's the update on legislative session. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Does anybody have questions for Jacob? If you're online, just go ahead and chime in because we may not see if you're raising your hands. Okay. 
Thank you. And um, as Jacob mentioned, he's sending out the weekly updates and posting those to the web. But in between those updates, if you have a question about any of the bills, uh, please feel free to contact Jacob or I, and we can give you the up to the hour uh, information about any of them. The next uh, item on the agenda is an administrative update, and this is um, <clears throat> fairly uh, brief. There are two uh, stakeholder outreach events scheduled before the next board <laughs> meeting. Uh, both the State Council of Firefighters and WACOPS are having their legislative meetings. Uh, they're both at the same time, uh, February, the week of uh, February 14th through 16th. Um, we will have a uh, presence at both meetings. I've been asked to make a um, presentation about the board bills and answer questions um, at the WACOPS meeting. Um, and then we'll be at the firefighter ledge meeting, but I don't know that we're going to be presenting or speaking or anything like that. There's no plans for that, but we will be there at both events to answer questions, both uh, uh, from stakeholder groups about the board's bills. Um, also, I wanted to give you a quick uh, budget update. We try to do that quarterly. Um, as of the last quarter, the Board's uh, budget had a very modest positive variance, a little over 3%, and the projections right now are that the final expenditures will be uh, have a positive variance of a little over 2%, so well within expectations. And again, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about that, either now or you can call me at any time. All right, the next meeting of the board is scheduled for Wednesday, February 28th at 9.30. The format of that meeting will be similar to this meeting. It'll be hybrid, um, online, and in person if you want to attend, but it's a, it'll be a session meeting as well, so there'll be a ledge update and an admin update. No expectation of any um, action items or policy items. I did want to um, say that the also that the board welcomes public comment in advance of all the meetings, and we posted instruction on the website for the submission of written comments, and we received no comments in advance of today's meeting. So there's no uh, no public comment today. With that, if there are um, no final questions from any board members. I'm not quite sure. I think we might have um, got a uh, quorum. So a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, um, Please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. All right. Again, we'll talk to you, see you again on February 28th. And if you have any questions in the meantime, please reach out to me or Jacob. Thank you all.